Hello everyone, my name is Kevin and I wanted to do a tutorial video on an issue that I had that frustrated me a lot <laughs> recently and that's exporting, specifically exporting a character from Daz Studio into Blender and it was an issue with hair. Finally sat down one afternoon on Saturday and figured it out. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is Daz Studio. The version I have is version 4.15.0.30. And um, you don't have to have exactly the same version. As long as you can use the Daz to Blender Bridge, I think you should be fine. So what we do is come over here to scripts once we've installed the bridge. Now, I this is not a tutorial about installing the bridge. It's fairly straightforward, but there are some issues related to that that you may run into. Um, so I may do a tutorial video on that. If you're interested, you know, uh, let me know in the comments section and um, I'll uh, consider doing that. What we do first is we select Daz to Blender. Now what this will do is bring up a dialogue to allow you to set some things you want to configure before doing the export. I always do subdivision level two because if I don't, you'll notice areas around like the ears, the edges will be very blocky and this will fix that, make it nice and smooth like you have in Daz Studio. Um, I collect the textures and I think that's about all I really need to do, at least for this tutorial here. So we accept and then it'll go through the process, getting it ready for Blender. Okay, so script execution is complete. Uh, we can close this, or I'll just minimize it for now, and go over to Blender. So what we need to do is get rid of the cube, and where you find the import tool, or the uh, Daz to Blender bridge, is you open this menu over here, and if it's installed properly, you, you'll see this Daz to Blender uh, tab. Select that and just click Import New Genesis Figure. Okay, so it looks like our character's loaded. What I wanna do is show you the area where I'm having trouble with the hair. So if you look around the hairline here, you'll see everything looks fine. We're in Eevee right now, and it does, we're in Eevee right now, and it does look fine in Eevee. So um, the problem what, where we have is when we go over to the cycles, when we use cycles, I'll show you. Okay, so if you look around the edge of the hair here, there's this really kind of blocky looking shadow thing around the edge of the hairline. It looks like she's, um, it looks like she's dyed her hair with shoe polish. The way I solved this was to go in when we're in the cycles render engine, go down to light paths, and then what we'll do is select all of these max bounces based on videos I've watched from um, content creators like uh, Blender Guru, you can set basically all of these to one and it doesn't do much to impact the quality of the render. The one area where it does affect things is the transparency. In order to get rid of this black blotchy area around the hairline, what I had to do is really bump this up quite a bit in order to solve the issue. Now, you do see some areas around like the forehead where there's like a black line. That is the intersection of the scalp cap with the texture, the skin texture. Um, and that's something that can be solved. I usually solve that through uh, scaling. Uh, if you know of another way to solve it, please let me know. Uh, but I usually scale the hair just a little bit. Uh, there's a problem with the scalp cap anyway. It does intersect with the forehead. Um, I'm not happy about that, so, but uh, it's something I can fix. But if we set the transparency to 20, what you'll notice is all of that blotchy area around the hair is now gone, completely gone. And you will see some shadowing around here. It's the hair reflecting off of the forehead and the, and the head. So, but you'll notice the blotchy areas are all gone. And you may be able, you may be, you may play around with that some. I had to set mine to 20. If I do it anything less than 20, even if I go to 18, it does affect the, you start, you start to see some of those blotches come back in. But I set everything to one and then set the transparency to 20. If you guys know another way to solve this, that may be, um, well, if you know another way to solve this, uh, let me know in the comment section. I just played around one afternoon because I really want to start using Blender to export these characters. Use the powerful animation tools in Blender to, uh, for a visual novel series that I have coming up. It's called the MRU Chronicles. It is full of action, adventure, uh, fun, and humor. 
and it is going to be released this fall. If you check here on my channel, you'll see a trailer video for that. Um, and it's a lot of work and effort. It's visual novel based. Uh, there is some animation in it, but I hope in the future to make it fully animated as I continue my animation journey that I've been doing for about nine months. So if you like the video, uh, if you want to check out my trailer, uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Hit the bell notification icon because I plan to do more of these tutorial videos as time goes on, as time permits, uh, to give back to the three-dimensional animation community that has been amazingly helpful to me. I've watched a lot of tutorial videos, everyone that I've contacted or talked with, watching live streams on YouTube and commented on have been really helpful, really nice. So I want to give back to the community that's been so good to me. And I do have some more tips and tricks and and uh, techniques that I've learned uh, that I plan to share with you in more tutorial videos in the future. So you guys have a great rest of your week. Stay safe and we'll see you in the next video.